Have you ever wondered how a nuclear reactor works? These fascinating feats of engineering are essentially complex systems designed to generate electricity through a process known as controlled nuclear fission. At its most basic, this principle involves the splitting of atomic nuclei, usually uranium or plutonium, which releases a significant amount of energy. The key components of a nuclear reactor include the reactor core, where the magic of nuclear fission takes place, fuel rods that house enriched uranium or plutonium, and control rods that regulate the rate of fission. Other essential parts include a moderator to slow down neutrons, a coolant to carry away heat, a heat exchanger and turbines and generators to convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. And of course, there are robust containment structures and various safety systems in place to ensure everything runs smoothly and safely. Now, let's delve into the heart of a reactor, the reactor core. The reactor core is the beating heart of a nuclear reactor. It's here that nuclear fission reactions take place, a process that involves the splitting of atomic nuclei, typically uranium or plutonium, which releases a significant amount of energy. This energy is what we harness to generate electricity. Now within this core, we find fuel rods generally made of enriched uranium-235 or plutonium-239. These fuel rods are arranged in a certain configuration that allows for a controlled chain reaction. It's like a perfectly choreographed dance, where each movement, or in this case, each reaction, triggers the next, maintaining a steady rhythm of energy production. It's an intricate balance, a delicate dance of atomic particles that powers our world. The core is where the magic happens, but it needs a little help to get things going. Enter Fuel Enrichment. For a reactor to function efficiently, we need to enrich the fuel. This is where our journey into the heart of a nuclear reactor really gets interesting. You see, natural uranium is largely made up of uranium-238, a variant that's not particularly good at causing the chain reactions we need. Instead, we rely mostly on uranium-235, a much rarer version, but one that's much more cooperative in the fission process. So, we need to enrich our fuel to increase the concentration of uranium-235. This is typically done to around 3 to 5 percent, depending on the specific design of the reactor. This might not sound like a lot, but it's enough to get the party started, so to speak. And how do we do this enrichment? Through processes like gas diffusion or gas centrifugation. These methods separate the two types of uranium, allowing us to concentrate the uranium-235. But it's not enough to just have the right fuel. We need a way to control the reactions. Enter the control rods. These are inserted into the reactor core and play a crucial role in regulating the fission rate. They're made of materials that absorb neutrons such as boron or cadmium. Think of the control rods as the conductors of our nuclear orchestra. They can be adjusted to fine-tune the power output of the reactor or, if necessary, to shut the whole thing down. They're the safety switch, the brake pedal, the emergency stop button. They're how we keep a handle on the immense power we're dealing with here. And so, with our enriched fuel and control rods in place, we're ready to start controlling nuclear fission reactions. But hang on, we're not quite there yet. We've got the fuel and the control, but things are moving a bit too fast right now. We need to slow down the pace, make things a bit more manageable. Now that we have control rods in place, we need a moderator to slow things down. And that's where we'll pick up next time. It's time to slow things down a bit with the help of the moderator. Picturing a nuclear reactor as a giant energy-producing dance floor, the moderator is the DJ, controlling the tempo of the party. But instead of beats per minute, the moderator is regulating the speed of neutrons. You see, neutrons released during nuclear fission are like partygoers on an energy drink. They're moving too fast to sustain the chain reaction efficiently. The moderator, like a good DJ, slows these neutrons down to a more manageable pace. Materials such as water or graphite are typically used as moderators. They interact with these high-speed neutrons, reducing their speed and hence increasing the likelihood of further fission events. While the moderator is slowing things down, the reactor's coolant is busy with another task. It's like the air conditioning system of our dance floor, keeping the temperature in check. The reactor core, where the fission takes place, generates a significant amount of heat. This heat needs to be controlled and transferred away from the core to prevent overheating and potential damage. 
Enter the coolant. Common coolants include water, pressurized water or liquid sodium depending on the reactor type. The coolant circulates through the reactor core absorbing the heat produced by the fission reactions. But the coolant's job isn't just heat control, it's also about energy transfer. The coolant carries the absorbed heat away from the reactor core to a heat exchanger. It's like a thermal courier delivering the heat where it can be put to good use. So let's recap. The moderator is the DJ of our nuclear dance floor, slowing down the neutrons to keep the chain reaction going. The coolant is the air conditioning and courier service, controlling the heat and transferring it to the heat exchanger. With the heat produced, we need a way to harness it. That's where the heat exchanger comes in. And that, dear listeners, is a story for another scene. Stay tuned. The heat exchanger is where we start to see the real power of a nuclear reactor. The heat exchanger is like a backstage pass to a rock concert. It's where the magic happens. It's a bridge between the nuclear and the mechanical, a crucial juncture where thermal energy from the coolant is transferred to a secondary loop of water. This process is kind of like a relay race, with the baton of heat being passed from one participant to the next. This is where steam generation enters the picture. As the secondary water loop gets heated, it transforms into steam. It's a bit like boiling a pot of water on the stove, except this steam is not for cooking, but for driving turbines. Now, imagine the steam as a powerful gust of wind. As it rushes through the pipes, it encounters the blades of a turbine. The force of this wind makes the turbine spin, similar to how wind makes a pinwheel spin. This spinning turbine is where the nuclear reactor starts to flex its muscles. The spinning turbines are connected to generators, much like a bicycle pedal is connected to the wheels. The mechanical energy of the spinning turbines is converted into electrical energy by these generators. It's a bit like the dynamo on a bicycle, where the pedaling action generates electricity to power the bike's lights. But the process doesn't stop here. The steam that powered the turbines is condensed back into water and returned to the heat exchanger to start the process all over again. It's a continuous cycle, like the water cycle in nature, harnessing the power of nuclear fission to generate electricity. Now that we're generating power, we need to make sure everything is contained safely. Safety is paramount in a nuclear reactor. Ensuring this, reactors are encased within robust containment structures designed to prevent the release of radioactive materials. These containment structures are not just walls but a labyrinth of multiple layers of protection, including thick concrete walls and steel barriers. Beyond structural safeguards, nuclear reactors are equipped with various safety systems. These systems are designed to prevent and mitigate potential accidents. They include emergency shutdown systems that are triggered by abnormal conditions, backup power supplies and cooling systems to manage excess heat, even if the reactor isn't generating electricity. At the helm of all operations is the control room. Here, operators monitor and control the reactor's operation using sophisticated instrumentation and control systems. They ensure the reactor functions within its designed parameters, while automatic safety systems provide an additional layer of protection. Uh, now that you understand the workings of a nuclear reactor, you can appreciate the complex engineering and stringent safety measures that go into generating nuclear power.